Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening all. Uh, my name is Rahul Thacker. I'm the Senior Vice President uh, here at Kairos, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm joined here with uh, by Amit Deshpande, who is the Senior Vice President of Platform and Product Engineering at Kairos, based out of Bangalore, India. And today's topic is going to be all around um, API testing and the practices for improved speed, scale, and efficiency. So let me talk about why we are here. As all of you know, today's a technology landscape is dominated by APIs. With the ever increasing connected landscape, APIs are playing a much bigger role in how people, technology, and services are connected. Adoption of APIs and requirements around testing is on a rapid rise. And we see that on a daily basis as we have conversations with our prospects and with our clients. One of the most interesting thing that we learned as a part of these conversations is, even though API testing is happening within organizations, comprehensive API testing is not non-existent in many organizations. As a matter of fact, less than 20% of businesses say that they are fully automated in API testing. And just to prove this out and get more factual data, we conducted a survey with our clients and some prospects. And here are some selected results uh, that, we, that we have. 47%, almost 50% of respondents agreed that they don't adequately test APIs. And almost 80% said that it because it's complex. And of course, that's a little bit subjective, but we'll talk about that as a part of this presentation. 75% plus respondents said that they were either manual or semi-automated. This was the most compelling uh, statistic. 10% said that they conduct comprehensive API testing. And when we asked the question, why the others don't do it, 90% said that API documentation is challenging to procure, which means that once the APIs are developed, we can't really understand what they're doing. And over 80% said that an integrated platform will help. And there was a little bit of qualification for these statements because we had asked questions around shift left, how developers can play a part, uh, how QA testers can play a part. So there's a little bit of background to this, but over 80% said 80% integrated platform will help. 72% agreed that the landscape is only going to get more and more complicated and bigger. And 88% said that the cost was going to be a major factor. And on a broader level, as we looked across multiple facets of QA, Total cost of ownership was the number one issue highlighted by business leaders. So obviously with the way the economy is going and with the, thing, the way things are progressing, um, everybody wants to look at how can we lower costs and how can we make it more effective and efficient. So with that background and input from some of our leaders in the organization, we thought that the three areas that we wanna focus on today is how can you tackle API testing complexity? How can you break barriers and make API testing more comprehensive? And the last point, which is very critical, is how do you scale your API testing beyond functional? So how do you bring in the performance aspect, the ability to do process API testing, eventually mature that into monitoring so that you are more proactive as opposed to reactive and how do you bring in things like service virtualization at the, at the top end of your development, all in a single place, all in a single platform? So with that, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Amit Deshpande, who is the platform and product leader for Kairos. As a matter of fact, he has been with Kairos since the inception of the, of the platform. He has been key in developing all aspects of the platform, and I call him the mother of Kairos. So with that, Amit, over to you. Thank, thanks, Rahul. So let me quickly switch over and share my screen. So it's gonna be a lot of um, uh, show and tell, uh, but I'd just like to quickly breeze through some of the slides just to highlight 
the key th three problems that we're trying to address in, in, today's, uh, in, in today's webinar. Um, so let me start uh, with uh, the first one, uh, which is, um, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, can you see my screen still, everyone? Hello? Um, okay, all right. So, um, so the first one being, um, okay, I think I have some. Sorry, I'm missing your screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yeah. I think it's coming up on it. All right. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So, so the first, so what does uh, everything that Raul mentioned translates to? So when we spoke to some of our clients, um, what we realized are three uh, main areas. So one of the impressions that we got from folks who uh, have been involved in testing for a long time, uh, testing these systems which are built with an API foundation, most of the conventional testing teams felt that API testing is extremely complex, right? So there's a lot of technicality involved and uh, only functional knowledge of the system typically does not help them, right? So that's number one. Number two is uh, what we also observed is that APIs by default uh, are, are designed, or systems which are built on API are designed to work uh, in conjunction with, with each other. Uh, however, uh, what we found was testing of APIs was predominantly done in silos. So basically, uh, there were no workflows uh, within any organization that we spoke to, which was built on an API foundation, where all the APIs responsible to execute any functionality was being handled by one team. It was always a combination of multiple teams that got together. But however, when we looked at from from a testing perspective, uh, the story was something different. So, uh, and every team was trying to test it in silos. But when things got together, that's when they started finding a lot of issues and they fell back to relying more on, from a UI perspective. Now, whoever did it to relatively, um, uh, in, 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 in a relatively uh, meaningful manner, uh, they found it hard to scale. So when we talk about scale, and it's it's essentially how can we, um, you know, let's say start with functional and move toward towards more, uh, you know, things like load testing and other non-functional testing, right? So so those are the kind of things, um, you know, that these were the top three problems I would say that we observed uh, across all the clients that we spoke to, uh, who were also part of the survey. Now what we're trying to do as part of this webinar is go through uh, how we are solving these three problems. Now, is this a comprehensive list? Uh, definitely not. There are many other things that, that are part of API testing, but what we're going to uh, primarily target on how do we solve these three um, you know, common problems that we see in organizations which are trying to do API testing. Now, the first one, being API testing, uh, you know, calling API testing as complex. Now, essentially what we did, and, and this is something that we follow um, as, as a principle, and this is one of the guiding principles of Kairos, is, is remove the complexity wherever it exists as far as automated testing is concerned, right? So as part of the API testing, so what we did is uh, eliminated all the complexity, and essentially what it means is we removed the need for writing a lot of code uh, in order to do your API testing, but at the same time not compromise on the quality. Right? So the first thing that we did, as you see on the top, is uh, you can do three kinds of tests as far as uh, APIs are concerned. One is the individual APIs, which is the functional testing and performance testing of these APIs that you would have, you would have functionally tested. And then there is the process where we bring all these three, uh, you know, all, all the APIs together uh, to execute a, a particular workflow. Right. And, and the second thing is how do we import, uh, how do we get these APIs on board? Right, so we, we have seen, uh, and, and it's just something uh, that we all as developers, as well as testers, uh, you know, we know how popular Postman is in this space, and, and we as developers love Postman. And one of the things that we saw is most of the testing teams ended up using Postman uh, because, uh, because their developers used it. And or uh, it is easier to share collections uh, of APIs that the developers would have written. Uh, back to the testing team and they could import it in their workspace and execute them. But so hence, we also have an ability to import, uh, you know, uh, if your developer shares a Postman collection, you could basically import it, right? And at the same time, you could uh, get it from a Swagger doc if you're on an open API standard, uh, or you could also key in all the values manually into the API and, and build the test. Now, at the same time, there is also uh, housekeeping built in as part of Kairos. So you could uh, you know, put all the tests associated with that API or the different methods of that API into one um, uh, one folder, or as we call it as test suite, right? So, so basically, getting 
on board um, as far as API testing on Kairos is extremely simple with multiple ways of importing your APIs onto Kairos and then performing various kinds of tests and also running, you know, doing a bit of housekeeping. Now coming to the, the actual testing itself. So when you look at it uh, from, from a testing perspective, uh, and as I said, so typically everything that you would write you know, uh, JavaScript code, or if you're using some other uh, API testing solutions like, you know, REST Assured and so on. Um, so the need of writing uh, lengthy assertions um, or uh, a lot of code is absolutely taken away. So, and and predominantly our assertions are spread across uh, multiple areas and we'll get into, uh, into them when I get to the demo. Uh, but basically these wider uh, or the breadth of assertions that we provide uh, you know, and and that too in a codeless fashion helps achieve a lot of comprehensive test coverage, right? So from from that perspective, uh, it's extremely easy to begin uh, testing APIs on Kairos uh, because all the complexity has been removed, and it and it is easy to um, you know get going as far as uh, you know from your existing ecosystem, whether it has Postman or anything else, onto Kairos, and then uh, without losing any of your test coverage whatsoever, right? So the next pillar that we spoke about is uh, testing being done in silos. Now, where it actually plays out, and this is something that is a common challenge, uh, not just for API testing, but for pretty much all kinds of testing that we do. And especially when organizations are getting more and more, um, uh, you know, what we call as connected. So when you talk about connected, so the apps that we're building are part of a larger ecosystem. So there are no more apps which are uh, which are uh, complete in themselves. So there's a lot of uh, cross sharing of information, uh, you know, multiple calls, you know, single yeah, provider, multiple consumer sort of situation that occurs. Uh, and hence, uh, testing teams cannot afford to test their systems in silos. Now, hence, uh, as part of that, uh, what we also got in uh, is what we call as API process. Now, these API processes are basically an extension of your single yeah, functional yeah. tests. I mean, that being converted into the way uh, you know these APIs talk together. So basically, it's a simple drag and drop interface that you can connect together, uh, and then which helps you pass the control, which is what API is going to call uh, you know uh, what API, and also between these APIs, what is the information that is getting exchanged. So this is a very good use case. Uh, you know, if you are into, uh, you know, things like microservices testing, for example, uh, where there are different, um, uh, you know, uh, different uh, functionality of your service, which are, or it might be different microservices as well. And at the same time, this also helps you test your own APIs in conjunction with other, um, uh, other parties. There might be third parties uh, that you are relying on, uh, which is a very common use case these days. Or it can be another team that you do not have access to, right? In, in, in a typical sense. So you could basically test every single uh, uh, API of yours um, in an end-to-end -end fashion, more from a functional standpoint and precisely the way they operate in production. Okay, now, Amit, what, ha Amit, what happens? Sorry. I mean, sorry. Uh, can, can I request you to go into presentation mode? Uh, let me try. Uh, do you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay. I think it has gone back. It has gone to a small, uh, a really small. It's actually. Okay. So, uh, any any better now? Well, you may want to just blow up the the or zoom in. Yeah. 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 There's the presentation mode. Yeah, that's that's what I'm using right now. The bottom screen. Yeah. Yeah, is this, is this better? Uh, because I can see twelve from my other device. So, and and just to just to make a point, I I I, I think Amit, when you switch over to the platform itself, people should be able to see all yeah. of this information, yeah, right? That's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. Um. So so what happens? So again, I'm going to go through all of this as part of the demo, uh, and it'll be much clearer. Um, so what what we're also actually uh, do when we take over uh, some of these functional tests into what we call as an API process is that they also carry forward the assertions, right? So one of the toughest things when when uh, you know especially from from a testing perspective and uh, and and for teams who are uh, who whose intention is not just to find bugs but also um, uh, you know, help the development teams or other teams centralize the problem is that when uh, when anything fails, we should also be in a position to quickly say what failed um, and, and, and what was the reason why the failure occurred, right? So, so what happens as part of the API process is when we import, 
uh, the APIs from our functional test and then convert them into a process test. What also happens is that we carry forward those assertions, right? And and when when you run this as an end-to-end -end test, you can actually figure out which part, if the, if there is a failure that occurs, you can precisely point out where uh, the failure occurred, right? And it also the way uh, and 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 the, since the assertions are carried forward as well. And then in addition to that, you can also look at uh, individual response times of uh, of of these APIs as well, right? So that is as far as uh, the the, uh, the how do we defeat the, the problem of uh, you know testing in silos is concerned now finally uh, it's it's the, the question about scale right so how how can i how can i take this and then scale it up into let's say uh, which in in a way that will help me perform uh, things like load testing right so so from that perspective if you look at it i could take the same functional test that i have and basically convert it into uh, into a performance test and then since kairos is 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 a, a product a platform which is hosted on the cloud so we take um, uh, advantage of the elasticity of cloud to increase the load uh, um, and 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 do that on demand so we can just slide this uh, to increase the load and apply uh, an expected response time and and check how uh, your api performs now uh, there's one caveat here is that we are not um, we're not saying this is a replacement to an end-to-end -end performance test, but this is uh, this is designed to give an initial indicator of what potentially might go wrong when you do performance tests. So you could find some of these issues uh, at, you know, at the part at the point when you're doing functional testing, so that you can you can watch out for uh, you know for for uh, for these issues and and avoid them being detected. Uh, and something that can be fixed earlier in the life cycle can can always be fixed. Uh, you know, before, uh, you know, it gets to the point where, as we know, typically performance tests happen at the end of the life cycle. So where it is more expensive to fix uh, any sort of bugs. Now, um, having said that, uh, one of the things that would highlight, and again, uh, you know, some of the sample reports, and I'm going to get to this uh, when, I, when I show the show the demo as well. Um, so some of the things that I would like to highlight is anything that you do on Kairos is CI uh, compliant. Uh, we have native plugins across um uh, all the popular CI platforms out there. So things like Jenkins, Azure DevOps, and so on, uh, you could directly integrate and execute. Uh, and and app, there's absolutely no setup required whatsoever uh, from your side. And as far as APIs, and especially in the non-functional aspect of APIs are concerned, we are purely looking at it from a client-side perspective. So we, we do not need any sort of instrumentation uh, you know, that, that is required on the server side. Uh, we would we, we purely operate in the client side space and our interest is to only let um, you or the team um, who is who's doing testing uh, know what is the perceived performance on the client side so so all the metrics that we have are tied to the client side and not to the server side right so with that uh, i'll quickly switch over uh, uh, you know to 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 our demo um, so where uh, let me share my screen and Raul, you can let me know if you can see my screen. All right. Um, all right, so perfect. So now um, as part of this, so one, as I said, so it's all about, uh, Kairos is all about, uh, uh, it's, it's a SaaS platform. So all you do is hit the, hit the URL, login, and then start testing from the word go. Right, so I'm, I land here uh, and then I go to my API testing. And again, uh, we'll, we'll get to this. So Kairos is not just about API testing. There are many other things as well, but I'll just quickly go to uh, API testing. And then here you see that there are different, um, uh, different projects as we call them. So as I said, there is housekeeping built in. So I can go into one of the tests and you can see on the left-hand side uh, uh, is the test suite. And on the right hand side, there are tests, right? So these are your individual APIs, as you can see. Now, and, and again, this is where I was talking about, um, uh, you know, where you can bring uh, APIs uh, from or onboard your APIs in different ways. So if I create a, a simple test suite here, and what happens when I create and then try and import? Here are multiple options that that come up. So if you have, if you are, if you are on an open API standard like let's say Swagger, then what I can do, and here is a classic example. So if I go back to Pet Store and come in here, and then I just say get APIs. So it will always, um, you know, get all the APIs that I have as part of. Uh, sorry. So it will get all the APIs that are part of the Swagger document. And uh, out of the box, as you can see, and then I can just simply select the APIs that I want to build tests for, and then I could simply say generate the test scripts. So what happens now is we read the Swagger document, 
and then we go ahead and uh, you know create all the tests for you, right? Uh, and then uh, for uh, just to highlight that we support three kinds of APIs: REST, SOAP, and GraphQL APIs. Uh, you could basically test any of them on Kairos. Now coming back to this test soup. Now what actually happens? So let's go into one of these APIs, and this is a REST API, as you can see. What happens when you import using Swagger or Postman collections and so on is that most of the metadata of the API is already uh, filled in so that you can directly jump to the assertions aspect of it. So here you can see that I just give a name for this API. I provide a description and I provide a context path and then what protocol it is on and then if there is any port number and what is the word type. And again, as I said, you don't have to do all this if you uh, if, if you're importing it from Swagger or Postman and so on. Now, if there is any authorization that is required in order to do this, uh, in order to make the calls, any headers and parameters uh, that I need to pass, um, you know, to make any of these calls, uh, and all of them are here. And then uh, the, comes the key part, which is the assertions aspect of it. Now, as you see, we have split them into four parts. So now, uh, first thing is assertions on header, right? So if I am looking to um, you know, assert anything that is coming in as part of the header. So all the possible um, uh, headers uh, are uh, the keys have already been provided here, and then you can just simply select what it is, and then uh, and then pass in the value or pass this value, right? So so that's that's as easy as it. Now comes the key part where most of the functional testing actually happens, which is the JSON path assertion. So I would like to verify um, a specific key values uh, as part of the response uh, that is coming back from the server. Uh, based on the request that I have sent in, as you know, from 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 our side, right, which is which is from the product side, or from from this particular feature perspective. Now, um, so as you can see, that there are uh, one is this path, right? So this is what I'm looking at. So I'm expecting that the category contains these three uh, letters of this particular string, and I'm ensuring that the response, the price is not null, and then I'm also expecting that the price should be less than. Uh, 200 in this case, right? Um, and then what I can also do is based on the schema, uh, if you want some hard or soft assertions, you could do that as well, right? So for example, for a null, you'd always want to check this, but if you think that's not mandatory, you can always make it optional so that it will still give you a result, but it's not going to fail the test in case the condition uh, or the assertion fails, right? Uh, and then, uh, and we also understand that, uh, you know, it might be hard for someone moving from uh, a, a typical, let's say a manual testing or a typical web automation or mobile automation guys to get this or write um, you know, assertions uh, or, uh, or create actually JSON paths. So what we've also done is uh, provided some uh, you know, small uh, handy utilities like the one here, which is a JSON path extractor. So you, you can just uh, you know, paste your body and say extract, and then you can simply copy this and then paste it here so that you can, you can do quick assertions. Right, and body assertion is something which is pretty straightforward. You know, I just want to make sure that something is there or uh, it's there or it is, is not there, both positive as well as negative assertions on the entire body. So you're not like specifically looking for a path or against the key, but instead you are doing it across, right? And again, uh, the assertions have many things here based on uh, your level of expertise. So in some cases, you know, it can be as simple as contains, does not contain. Um, uh, and just some typical math operators. But in addition to that, you could also write regular expressions. And for more advanced users who are coming from, uh, um, you know, uh, tools which have predominantly used JavaScript, then you can write the same JavaScript as well, which then gets executed, uh, you know, in, in, in real time, right? So, and then finally, um, and this is, um, uh, you know, what we call as the schema validation. So this is like sort of our uh, interpretation of how, uh, uh, you would do some aspects of contract testing. So what I mean by that is at the end of the day, uh, APIs, as, as we discussed initially as well in a connected ecosystem, uh, you know, you have, to, and especially when there are situations like single providers and multiple consumers, or, or you have consumer driven contracts and so on, uh, it is important that you um, ensure that the structure or the schema of your API doesn't break or doesn't change for that matter, right? So you would ideally want to ensure that whatever response you get, um, you know, when you're testing your API, it sticks to the, the original schema that was agreed as part of the contract, right? So it's important that that needs to be checked as part of, uh, as, as part of your functional testing as well. Now, again, uh, you know, if you're using Swagger, it's easy to get this in, but if you're not, then it's, uh, you know, we can also help you generate the schema. So I can always, you know, assuming that the body that I have from my documentation is, is good or is, is a valid one, then I can always get the schema generated based on a sample response and then 
go and apply it as part of this right so so essentially just to sort of summarize this so we have uh, you know assertions spread across uh, all the key areas which is your headers your json paths which are very specific and then on the body and then finally on the schema as well so once i put in all this stuff what i can now do is quickly do a run and this is where the concept of environments come to picture right so you might be testing it as part of your dev environment you could be testing it as part of your um, uh, in a uh, uh, qa environment or whatever so you can create um, you know environments as part of kairos so that you could select on what environment this particular api needs to run on so there is a high level of reusability you don't have to like uh, uh, you know create different apis or different tests for different environments so once that happens it is straight away sent to um, uh, sent to run and this obviously runs on our cloud uh, and then quickly comes back with the result so now i can go in and in the interest of time and it, it it's as fast as uh, you know it, it typically runs on local as well and now this is how uh, the report is going to look like right so one it tells me how long it took to run and then i can also look at what are the uh, assertions that i had right so i was expecting uh, the transfer encoding to be chunk so the expected is this actual is this and then similarly on the json path um, and then uh, i i was uh, and this was an uh, uh, skipped output meaning it was optional then i could say whether it was not null and actual output is 109.95 yes and then it is it should be lesser than 200 so it was 109.95 so hence it it is it is right and then you can also look at um, you know we had a assertion for body so that it should not contain a specific value so hence it did not contain that so hence it is passed and then i can also look at my schema validation and then i see this is my uh, and that pass as well and in case if there are any uh, errors that occur or um, any uh, issues that uh, you would i mean any defects then you can always uh, connect with and we have integrations with things like jira and others you can always log a bug and all this report goes back uh, in, in and and gets uh, and gets uh, uh, a defect created in jira right so this is the one that we just ran uh, and then it comes back with the same um, uh the same results that we just saw um and uh, uh, and yeah and then it is in addition to that uh, it will tell you how many tests were there and i'll come back to one of the other things uh, as part of this but how many tests what time did it start what time did it end you could download this report uh, so that you know you can keep it uh, keep as a as a local copy or you can quickly email it to somebody and then the email goes to them right and this is over and above uh, all the things that we uh, 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 we just saw which is integrations and other stuff now at the same time you might have observed one thing um, so uh, let's say here is another example uh, where uh, we have this ability to have this uh, uh, these the 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 test to be data driven for example right i don't want to like in the earlier test i par i had hard coded values everywhere but here what i can essentially do is drive this test with an external file and you can see here uh, that uh, we give you a template uh, that you can download and then uh, what happens is you need not parameterize you know we understand that there might be some fixed values uh, so you don't want to do that so you can pick and choose what would you like to parameterize right so whether uh, a specific part uh, a specific header or a path parameter that needs to go in as part of this or you can also look at uh, specific assertions right so not every assertion needs to be parameterized but are there any specific assertions that you would like to parameterize so basically uh, you can pick and choose what data needs to be fetched from the file and what data needs to be asserted from the file and what are some of the static values so that you could basically drive this uh, entire test with your uh, with an external data source which in this case is is a csv now in addition to that one might wonder that what happens in scenarios where you have uh, uh, you know things like uh, a prerequisite api or or like for example login scenarios uh, you know require or allow um, or sorry in, in some cases there might be uh, things like login apis which uh, which require a token um and or any other apis which might require a token before they are they 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 uh, they are called so in such cases we have this concept of prerequisite apis so which you can always trigger and then in your api you can uh, every time um, you know uh, a particular api runs it basically runs this api gets the data and then goes ahead and makes another call which is the main test that uh, uh, and you can use this across uh, across your project no matter what apis there you can, they can all you know have a reference to this 
and this it gets executed before the main API gets called so that the variables are uh, or the token value is passed. And, and it's not just restricted to token, basically you can do anything. And that's where we get into this aspect of uh, dynamic APIs, right? So, um, you know, if there might be things, you know, where uh, which are required in runtime. So things like, as I said, token is one of those things which is very dynamic in nature. It changes every single time. So you can sort of... Uh, put those uh, in these variables and then refer those variables into your tests, you know, wherever uh, required. And then in addition to that, it can also be things like, uh, which are essential, but at the same time, uh, you do not have any such validations on that. For example, I just need a random, uh, uh, you know, uh, a random 10 uh, digit uh, integer, right? So I can and simply call it something like, you know, let's say account number uh, and, and let's say generate something between, you know, uh, uh, something of 10 digits, right? And then I can use this as part of my whatever parameter, right? So it can be a, a header or a query or whatever, and then it goes and makes a call there, right? And then, uh, and we spoke about this. So this, the, all these variables are tied to this global environment as we speak, right? So there can be a similar, uh, you can have your endpoints parameterized, you can have your, uh, you know, your context path parameterized using this. And then you can have all those as part of this environment. Now, when it comes to dev, you might only have one of those things and others can be filled in from somewhere else, right? So you can basically create environments, clone these environments and have environment specific variables as part of this, and then just use those as part of your test, right? So, so there is, uh, uh, there are these uh, options as well. Now that is as far as, you know, your single, uh, sorry, your single API tests are concerned. Now, before I get to performance, what I would like to do is quickly get over to uh, the API process side of things. Now, when you see here, and, now, and there are three tests that we have already created uh, in, in just so in, in, in the interest of time, what I can essentially do is I can go in this test uh, and what happens is it's like a, a simple, um, you know, a, a three-step process. Process. One is I can import my APIs from my functional test. So here it lists down all the test suits that I've built for my functional testing, which we just saw. And then I can go in and I can say, you know, get me this and this API and then just import it. And then it imports those APIs uh, into the process. So which basically means uh, it carry forwards all these um, uh, APIs and their associated assertions and metadata. And then, and then once that happens, I can then go and make any changes if required uh, when I'm try trying to put these things together. And then what I can do is I can come in here and all my APIs are listed and I can connect these APIs together to form a, a, a process, right? So where, when I, when I go in here, so I have made these connections, then now I can say, uh, simply play around and say what data needs to be passed from which API to which API. So since there is only one connection that we have here right now, so it is only giving you this connection. So if you have more, then you it'll 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 give you more connections as well. So here, what we're essentially saying is from a, get a single product API, take the JSON path or whatever value comes under uh, you know ID, and then pass that as a query parameter to the update product API under the key name ID. Right, so you can you can create a, a, a data flow like this, right? And at the same time, uh, if you if you observe one thing, one of the things that we observed um, as part of our our initial uh, discovery is that uh, when whenever these large programs and especially companies which are learning these large digital transformation sort of programs, uh, very rarely it happens that an entire system undergoes a big bang migration sort of approach. So most of the times, what happens is that these are done in in batches, meaning uh, applications are moved one at a time. So you might you might see in a situation where uh, there are few APIs or let's say majority of the APIs which are still in um, uh, in in SOAP, and some of them are being migrated to REST. So it's important that we should be able to, uh, but but that doesn't mean that the end user of the of of the system. Uh, you know, should should get a bad uh, experience that perspective. So it's important from the testing team's perspective that both these legacy APIs as well as the uh, as well as the modern digitalized APIs should still work in conjunction to deliver the same business process that we see uh, that the customer is expecting. So hence, there is also an ability here to connect SOAP to REST to SOAP and so on. So there is no uh, limitation on how long this chain can be and how heterogeneous this chain can be. So you can connect uh, you know, a SOAP to SOAP and then get something from there and then pass it on as a query parameter to let's say a REST API and then vice versa. So you can build any combinations. And that's why like we saw JSON path, 
you also have an XMath extractor in case you have an XML response. And so that you can then tie this thing together and execute this as part of, uh, as part of this end-to-end -end chain, which involves uh, testing of an end-to-end -end process. Now, when I run this, um, what happens is I get uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, result. So in this case, you know, it was a, a simple uh, two-step, uh, sorry, uh, it was a simple two-step process that we just ran. And um, and if you see, uh, whatever tests we had as part of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the flow, right? So when we connected one test to the next one uh, or one API to the next one, you can actually see that not only did this process get tested, like through the passing of data and so on, but you also, uh, the, because we carry forwarded these APIs from our functional tests, what you also saw is that um, there are these assertions that got carry forwarded as well, right? So the same uh, assertions get carry forwarded and you can actually see how did this API perform? So did this API work individually? So the answer is yes. Did it work in conjunction? The answer is yes as well, right? And you can actually see the response and so on. So now imagine having a bigger process where there are single providers and multiple consumers. So what essentially happens now is that uh, if something fails, you can actually go back and trace which API was the culprit that for, for this to fail and what data get got passed on, right? So, so that helps you sort of not only test this end to end, but also ensure that if there is a failure, you can precisely point out which API and then you can raise uh, a defect to that precise team. Right. So, so that's that's uh, that's a huge advantage. And what we, interestingly, what we also saw with some of our clients who are using the solution is that uh, you know uh, there are teams who have also started using this uh, as part of as 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 a way to document the way uh, the APIs are are talking to each other. Right. So most of the times, saw that the testing teams are really not aware the the, the detailed mechanics of how things happen uh, behind the scenes. Right. They know that there are these different teams who have these different APIs, but this also brings um, you know uh, everyone to the same page as far as the structure of communication goes. As you know, when when you look at uh, it from more from business process perspective or a functional perspective, right? So that's why we strongly believe that people who have good functional knowledge of their application are well suited to actually do API testing this way, uh, uh, you know, so that they can test these systems comprehensively, which then requires very less, uh, you know, UI based tests to uh, to be run. Uh, and as we know that those tests are pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, time consuming in, in the amount of time they run. And also uh, they are prone to brittleness, which is not the case in, 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 in this, um, in the API testing world. Right. So, so that's uh, as far as process is concerned. Now, um, so let's quickly go to the, the to the performance testing part as well. So, I can basically take the same thing. So, let's say here again. Uh, and and by the way, each of it's need it's not necessary that you have to write a functional test to do a process test because I can bring um, uh, you know I can add some new APIs into this. Absolutely not a problem. But the only advantage you get. Uh, by bringing it from the functional test is that your assertions get carried on so that uh, you know you could you could test both process as well as the individual APIs. Uh, now coming to the performance test and again I can do the same thing that I can actually add um, uh, sorry um, uh, I can actually import now when I look at import again it brings down uh, brings this particular suit and then I can select any API and then I can import. So what again happens is that I need not you know fill in the entire information again. I can just simply get it. And then, um, so when I look at this particular test and then go to execute it, and this is where uh, the slider comes into picture. So we could, I mean, this is our demo account, so it's capped at sort of 100, but, uh, oh, sorry, it's capped at 1,000, but you can go to any number that, that you want, right, as, as part of our main subscription. So you can uh, use this to slide uh, uh, and then increase, increase the load. And at that load, uh, what is the response time that we're looking at? And on which environment? this particular API needs to be run or loaded, right? So you can basically um, use this purely for load generation as well, right? So if you want to, if you have a good server side setup, everything instrumented, if you want to quickly check how things work out, then you can also use the same um, uh, APIs that you wrote functional testing for, quickly import it and then start firing. Now you might wonder, uh, you know, like what is the point in loading the same, uh, uh, sorry, loading this API uh, with, with the same data. So hence, that's where the parameterization also comes into picture. Then I can parameterize this uh, API and then it will give me a template and then I can upload. And basically 
the the way this works is the number of rows of data will be the number of times it is going to loop through so let's say you have 10 rows of data for this api then and your user load is 100 so essentially what we do is repeat the cycles uh, you know this 10 cycle 10 times right so we go through every row and then trigger it and then um, you know keep doing this for uh, up to up to a point where the load reaches 100 so right now we are supporting burst mode only and then we are uh, shortly coming up with uh, the, the staged uh, loading as well right so when i basically run this i can go to the reports and then look at uh, some of these uh, 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 apis so here you can see it was loaded for 275 um, uh, with, with 275 threads so when i when i look at it so basically what i get is so i can define a response uh, threshold which is of 1000 millisecond here but i got a 4000 millisecond response and now what you can also see is we are tracking the status code for each of that uh, each of the, uh, uh, the the api firing that happened so so basically why is this necessary is uh, okay and before before we go there another thing is that we do not mark any test as passed or failed in this case so even if the response time is higher than uh, the expected threshold we still just give you the data because we do not know what conditions you are running this test on or whether the data uh, that was loaded was right or wrong and so on so we are giving you in a way uh, a load generation capability with a couple of assertions and we are as i said we are extending it to add more assertions than just response time but but the, the reason of getting status code uh, again back here for every assertion is if people want to try out stress testing they can essentially do that as well where they can see if they want to quickly check at what point their current setup breaks then they can essentially do that and we should be ideally seeing a, a, a five double x series uh, of, of response codes once the api really breaks down for that matter right so but here in this case we ran it 275 times uh, and um, and and what we, what we are essentially seeing is there were no failures so every every call came back with, uh, with with a valid response and it was success. And then we could see the response time sort of remaining flat across the board. And you could basically tag this back. But if you would like to understand uh, how uh, this performed, so if you want to understand more from a load generation perspective, so what was the the data, what was the throughput, and so on and so forth. So you can you can uh, you can assess it uh, from from these advanced uh, results as well, right? So so that's as far as um, um, uh, performance testing is concerned now all of this and again uh, uh, it's it, unfortunately it's not part of uh, uh, today's webinar but all of this was powered by uh, another capability of ours which is service virtualization i would like to just quickly uh, touch upon it um, and and there's there's the, the differentiator as far as our service virtualization capability is concerned is that we do not uh, approach it more from a stubbing perspective we expect it more we, we look at it more from uh, how do we give more control to testing teams? So basically with our service virtualization capability, uh, you can um, build APIs without any code which support the CRUD operations. So meaning um, they, they, they sort of, they are interactive APIs or we also call them high fidelity mocks because they can support, uh, you know, uh, multiple operations both, both back and forth. Meaning you're not going to get standard response every single time. It has an inbuilt functionality and adds, it has its own small database behind to which our data generation capability is connected as well. So, so essentially why is that important in this scenario is when you look at, um, uh, sorry, when you look at some of the, uh, the use cases that we discussed, uh, as part of this and especially as part of uh, you know our our uh, api performance uh, now one of the things that um, um, you know you saw is so let's say you are testing um, you, a functionality which requires you to uh, in, take inputs from a third party api which you might not have access to right so you but they might have published a, a swagger document so you can basically with our virtualization solution you can import the swagger document and convert it yeah. into a virtualized api um, and um, and essentially then what happens is you can actually play around with these responses and then uh, that will help you create what we call as a functional chaos testing scenario or in other words uh, we also call it um, what if testing now imagine something like you know we see a lot of uh, products these days are more real time meaning uh, so let's say uh, you, you, are, you are a fintech uh, and you are expected to give uh, or to make a credit decision under 10 seconds so your your tagline of your product says uh, you know get a loan under 10 seconds so obviously um, you know if you are 
maybe 10 seconds is too low, but let's say it's one minute or whatever, right? 60 seconds. Now in this scenario, it's extreme and we know how these credit decisions are made. So a decision on credit needs to be made. And that decision can only be made when multiple responses from different systems. So whether it is things like KYC or a credit rating and so on, just come back to your system and then there is some calculation that happens and then uh, the response uh, is created whether you can give a loan to this person or not, right? Or approve the credit or not. In such cases, it's a very time sensitive operation. Now, how do we test these kind of systems in, 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 in most of the teams? It's very hard for testing team to create that kind of environment, right? So where you want, let's say if you want to test something like what if the credit rating agency does not respond under five seconds, right? And then basically with virtualization solution that we have, you can actually assign latency to every single request so that whenever the request is A, then add a 500 millisecond delay to it and then respond. Now, imagine you're testing this more from a UI perspective as well. Right, so where you're saying, okay, you the customer filled in all the details and it said submit, and then what happens is you um, um, you're showing an interstitial space, let's say a GIF on the screen which says we are we are we are getting more information or whatever. You're actually waiting for all this orchestration to happen, which is basically what we do as part of this process testing here, and all of this to happen to come back and produce a result that you eventually your UI shows, right? So the API response and the UI shows that yes, your credit is approved or whatever. Now, how do we test this thoroughly? What if the third party uh, uh, API that you're reliant on has changed its contract, right? And 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 uh, you know, uh, and, and there was new um, uh, a new value that got added or or some data type got changed. Now, how do we create this kind of conditions? And how do we test this, right? So that is precisely why uh, uh, service virtualization that we have uh, ties back with this process testing. And again, it's not necessary that you have to use our service virtualization to do something like that. But this is the kind of usage that we expect our our our, uh, our customers to drive or use uh, and really make um, uh, you know good use of our API process testing, which we believe is extremely powerful and it can reduce your end-to-end -end testing time when it comes to UI testing easily down by 50 to 60 percent because most of the functional bugs are caught here and you're only left with visual uh, bugs at the end of it right uh, so with that um, uh, i'll hand it back over to uh, to rahul, uh, rahul uh, who will take this forward amit um, thank you very much uh, <clears throat> as you can as you can tell and by the way thanks for participating in the polls um, as you can tell through the presentation that Amit gave, uh, the API functionality with Kairos is, is not only broad, but it's fairly deep. And it's almost impossible to get to every single detail in a way that people can consume in 40 minutes or 45 minutes. So um, I appreciate everybody taking the time to um, to respond to the polls. One thing I would say is uh, we've got uh, a couple more slides, so please uh, start uh, putting your questions in so that we can take those towards the end of the end of the presentation. So what I'd like to do now is um, talk a little bit about uh, the Kairos platform itself. Um, as you saw, we've got uh, we've got the API module um, that is loaded with. Uh, you know, with features and the functionality that can not only cater to the, the the testing community, but also we believe can be pulled all the way up to the developer community um, in order to make testing faster, more efficient. And as as tedious as it might seem, going through all of these features because they are so um, so broad. Uh, really, one of the things that we focus on at Kairos is to simplify how you do testing, right? It's not it not just the ability to build, execute, but also how you connect with all of the other aspects of your testing. The second part that we focus on is, is automation. And we keep saying, you keep hearing the term automation in, in today's industry. Uh, we believe it's a journey and we wanna give you all of the features and capabilities that can help you and take you along and mature you in that, in that journey. And the third and the fourth aspect that we focus on extensively is how do you collaborate, right? I mean, how do you break down the silos between the different parts of your organization? Uh, and testing is not really an IT or a technology activity anymore. 
uh, it really is a, a uh, an activity that that is done across the organization. So you've got you've got developers on one end, and you've got business users and analysts on the other end. How do you actually bring all of them together in order to put out a product or a feature or a service in the marketplace that is going to uh, help you gain market share? And then scaling, obviously, across multiple things. Uh, is what we focus on. So let me demonstrate that aspect through what we have as a, as a platform. So today what you saw is the API module of our platform, but we also have the web and mobile testing modules that are built into the platform. And these are all organically built uh, modules, which means that they are consistent with the user interface, they're consist consistent with the underlying stack, uh, features and functionalities across are shared across each of these modules. So right off the bat, if you're doing web, mobile, and API testing, which is what most of the organizations are looking to do now, uh, you've got a good start on simplifying how you do testing and how you manage your testing landscape. But we've actually gone a step further and said, well, how do you bring in the ability for the organization to do business process testing? At the end of the day, if you've got web and mobile tests build an API being sort of at the center of this. How do you take all those together and have business processes being tested? So we've actually have a module that helps you do business process testing by reusing the tests and the packets that you have built in web, mobile, and API. In addition to that, we focus extensively on automation. Now, this is not something that you can, you can flip the switch but we can definitely give you the capabilities and tools to automate several aspects of your testing. Uh, starting with low code, no code, which is effectively becoming table stakes at this point in time, we've got recorders that, are, uh, that can help you build your tests quicker. And then we've got uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities through, at this point, four of our features. And I invite you to get in touch with us to talk about what these can, what these can do. The third aspect, which is something that uh, is, is very important to us, and as Amit alluded to that during the presentation, is we actually have integrated test data management uh, feature and functionality into our platform that really extends the platform beyond just testing, that gives you the ability to scale, that gives you the ability to run scenarios, that gives you the ability to really apportion data at different stages in your testing in a way that is meaningful. And all of this happens within the platform. So you're not going and looking at any of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Explorer files or Excel files or any of that. This is all available to you in the platform in different varieties. And in addition to that, we talked about the out of the box integrations with uh, standard CI CD pipeline, JIRA tools and things of that nature. And the last part, which is around collaboration and scaling is the aspect that, you know, we've got very robust reporting engines, as you saw as a part of the platform that can really help you make decisions on what's working and what's not working. But as we evolve the platform, we're actually introducing another module that lets you look at your testing world from the eyes of being proactive. It gives you signals as to what's working, what's not what's not working so that you can then develop your strategies uh, accordingly. And the last part, as, as Amit talked about, is because we are a SaaS platform with a built-in device and browser farm, we become the only platform in the marketplace today to give you the capability of connecting your testing to actual devices and browsers because we host our own browser and device farms. So from our perspective, really, as we, as we as we go on our journey to help you simplify, automate, collaborate, and scale, we bring you a platform approach to how you do testing that caters to not only the testing community within your organization, but also extends it beyond the developer community and also business so you can all work together in a single location. And I can talk about the, some of the benefits as, as we continue our conversations as to what we have brought to our clients in terms of benefits, but as you can see, our our goal really here is to give you a comprehensive platform that is simple to set up and effortless to scale and very cost effective to maintain. And obviously at the end of the day, as we introduce more and more AI capabilities and ML capabilities, we're making it uh, smarter. 
So with that, uh, Rochelle, I'll hand it back to you and I'll take any questions. Uh, myself and Amit can take any questions that you guys that you guys might have. Thank you all. Uh, we did have a, <clears throat> a question from Bantam B. How secured is this solution? Yeah, so uh, from, a, from a solution standpoint, um, you know, we are SOC2 and ISO 27,135. Um, and then uh, there are two hosting models that we have. Uh, one is what we call as public cloud, and the other one is private cloud. Public cloud is something that anyone can come and subscribe to a service and then uh, you know, test and, and get away with the results. And that is uh, ISO as SOC2 certified as well. Um, and uh, from, um, from a private perspective, if you are an organization who would not like to share uh, the infrastructure, uh, then we set up a dedicated instance for you, which is, um, which is separated from a compute network and storage perspective. Uh, we integrate with your SSO, uh, whatever you might be running. Uh, and then obviously uh, we are open to any kind of security audit that uh, audit requirements that your, your organization might have. Um, and uh, it's going to be connected uh, to your environment using secure tunnels. Uh, so uh, a simple answer is uh, we are ISO and uh, SOC2 certified. Uh, and then we host the, the instance based on the region that, uh, uh, that, that you, you may belong to. Uh, so if you are a, Europe, uh, if you're a UK uh, organization, then it's going to stay in UK. If you're in US, it's going to stay in US. So those are the two primary regions where we host right now. And, uh, and as I said, uh, we are fully certified. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, and yeah, I mean, we have been in operations, uh, operations since last uh, couple of years now, uh, and we count a lot of banks, uh, financial services institutions, uh, and others who are, who where there's a lot of sensitive data that we host as well. So yeah, we are, we are fully secure. Very good, Amit. Well, it looks like we are reaching the top of the hour. I'd like to thank on behalf of TechWell, Amit and Rahul for their time and insights on upgrading API testing practices and our sponsor, Kairos. And a special thank you also goes out to our audience who is joining us and we have, hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.